Uh, yeah, that's what everybody wants to hear, isn't it? Me blowing my nose. Hello, and welcome to a special Hamish video. Uh, this is an unboxing video. I, uh, I don't think I've ever done one before. And uh, it is for a very special uh, keyboard. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to tilt me away from, tilt the camera away from me and towards the uh, box. Hey, there we go, that worked. And open it up. So, here we go. Get the old knife out. Cut the box open. Let's see how we do. Now, of course, I'm, I'm kind of nervous about this for a couple of reasons. Uh, it's an unboxing video. I've never done one before. And obviously, once you've unboxed it, it's unboxed. So the fact that I'm doing it is, is kind of like a... It might as well be a live take anyway. So, you know. Well, it is a live take. I know what I mean. So let's move this over here out of the way anyway. Uh, da, 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 away from the microphone a wee bit. Right. A uh, bit of background. This is a... This is uh, mostly HexDSL's fault <laughs> for uh, keeping me looking at something, or for making me look at something. Um, I've thought for a long time that a, a keyboard, an analogue keyboard, would be a good idea. In fact, I've mentioned it a few times over the years, and, um, you know, it's, it's not an original idea. Other people have had the same idea, including one company in the Netherlands who did a quick... A quick I'm going to try that again, a Kickstarter uh, to uh, make it a reality. So, this is the Wooting Analog Gaming Keyboard. Um, I suppose I should open it up that way, really, shouldn't I? Because then you can see it better. Right, so it's in a plastic bag, as you can see, and obviously a courier box. There we go. All right. Uh, that's uh, so. There we go. There's the uh, the wooting thing. I'm not sure if I'm get. Oh, my poor Roka is going to feel bad and put it out of the way though, for the moment. So uh, the idea is, it's an analog keyboard which presents itself as a game controller for your system. Um, which means that instead of the button presses just being like a normal keyboard where you just click on or off, they um, have uh, travel uh, so that uh, you can push it further to go to to to, to emulate uh, moving a stick further, like you would on a game uh, gamepad. Boom, boom, boom. So essentially, it's a, 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 a an analog <laughs> of this analog stick. So uh, the equivalent is you know obviously with that with a keyboard, if you want to move a character around in a game, uh, you know, you push a button and it's just the same as a digital keypad. You're only pushing one direction or, or you know, a diagonal or whatever. Um, and it's on or off. Whereas, uh, an, uh, obviously the idea with an analog is that you can you can move slowly by pushing just a little bit or you can run by pushing it faster or, you know, you, you probably use a combination of keys for sprints and stuff as well. But um, the general idea is that you have a lot more control. Now, for a long time, I have kind of... There's a lot of games I, I quite like, I'd quite like to play. I quite think I would get into some more games that I've kind of poo-pooed a bit in the past if I was able to control, control them. Now, a lot of uh, things that require shooting and, uh, you know, looking around. So any first-person thing that, that, that has... Uh, analog uh, capabilities. For example, uh, one of my favourite games is Alien Isolation. I've tried to play that with the, the gamepad so many times because the, the ability to move slowly or, or faster, you know, just by moving the stick a bit further or whatever um, and have um, and have another controls is awesome. Um, but I, I just cannot get used to left stick or... Sorry, right stick or... or, or um, you know, in this case, pad or whatever, to do moving and uh, looking around. I just can't do it. I need a mouse and keyboard. So the combination of having the mouse to look around uh, along with 
analog movement for you know moving around and, and other controls it just really appeals to me also one thing worth mentioning since i've got the uh steam controller in my hand is that this uh, the steam controller has brilliant thing on the triggers is you can push them they are analog to to a point and then they have a digital see if you can pick that up on the mic so they move in no, I don't think you're going to pick it up unless I'm speaking. There we go. Hopefully you can hear that clicking now. <laughs> so these have a two-stage thing, which is supposed to be really good for things like um, like a shooter game where you have to uh, use a scope. So like you, you just push the, gently push one of the triggers to zoom in and to fire, you would just then... So you're you know you're barely moving. You're not you're not moving yourself around a lot. So you, you know hopefully you're more accurate. Um, so there's loads of good things that I wanted to tr I wanted to get out of particularly out of the uh, the Steam controller, which I think is one of the best controllers I've ever ever had um, for various reasons. But as I say, I've never ever, no matter how hard I try, been able to get used to the old uh, right hand thumb instead of a mouse. It just I just can't do it. So. Along comes um, Hex recently with uh, uh, reminding me that this thing existed and it's an analog keyboard. It was kickstarted a little while back, and uh, yeah. Without further ado, uh, I don't know if I'm going to edit this or just throw it up. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so f without further ado, let's move on. So this is the analog keyboard, the Wooting uh, One, I think it's called. What is it called? Gosh, it would help if I knew the name of it. Hang on. Uh, the Wooting One Analog RGB Keyboard. Now, uh, there's a couple of things to note. Uh, it is um, a mechanical keyboard. Uh, they are not uh, Cherry MX switches. Now, my other keyboard is Cherry MX Blue switches. This, because of the, obviously the, the, they have um, their own very specific um, keys, because they're not normal analog, uh, digital keys, um, so they don't actually do, uh, you know, MX. However, the keycaps are MX compatible, which is the sort of cross-shaped uh, thing. So you can put, you can change keys and things, keycaps and things. Uh, also, the, uh, the 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 two styles that it comes in so far are named to to give you an indication of what they're how close, you know, what they're closest to on a digital keyboard. Um, so I have gone for, as I have Cherry MX Blues, nice clicky ones that I like which uh, you might or might not be able to hear in the background, I'm not sure. Um, I went for the, you know, the closest equivalent they had, which was the, you know, the, the Clicky 55 Blue Switch, is what they've called it. Uh, it's a UK ISO keyboard layout, because I am in the UK. And uh, is this upside down? Oh, it is upside down. <laughs> oh, dear. That, that makes more sense. See? There you go. It's the Wooting One. Um... Apparently, wooting is a, a gaming thing that the young people would say because they say woot, which is uh, something about uh, we uh, we own the other team. I believe is what woot stands for. You may have seen it used in the in the vernacular of the young people in the gaming, um, and so they call themselves wooting, uh, wooting one. So this is the wooting one. That's the logo. It's a sort of um, crown or apparently the castle edge or whatever. <laughs> And uh, here's the keyboard. So I th think before I open the box, I just wanted to make sure 100% there's nothing else I want to say uh, regarding this. Um, this isn't going to be a technical video. This is literally just opening the box. Oh, I know what the other, what, there was one more thing I want to say. The one more thing I did want to say, um, let's get that lined up a bit, is that there's two versions available at the moment. Uh, this is the standard version which means it comes with some spares, so you'll see when I open the box there's, there's some spare parts and things in it and some little accessories, but there's a like a deluxe, I can't remember what they call it exactly but there's a, a special version where you get a whole set of key cap uh, keys rather as um, as, a, as a, you know, as, as extras um, it costs a bit more but I couldn't get that through the thing I wanted to, and also I couldn't really, I, I couldn't really justify adding the extra money to it um, you know, if, these kind of keyboards are expensive as it is. Oh, also, of course, it has all the usual, you know, modern things like RGB um, lighting and also comes with a really good bit of software, which I've had a little play with, um, obviously without plugging the keyboard in. I've had a play with it and looked at the, the videos and things. 
Uh, works with, uh, well, for anybody that's interested, it works with Windows, Mac, and, and Linux. I'm a Linux user only, so, you know, I'm not, when I, if I do talk about anything technical, I'm only talking about the Linux one. Uh, there are a few limitations on Mac OS and Linux, but nothing major and nothing that I don't think I'm going to be able to sort out. But that's a, that's a, for a future video. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go into technical detail with it just now. So yeah, so the other thing to say is uh, yeah, there was two versions of it. Also, it's a ten keyless keyboard, which means it has the main keypad, um, it has the function key row, and then it has the sort of navigation cluster. You know, the little arrow keys and the home page up page down. But it does not have a keypad or anything else like that. Um, it is quite a small keyboard, I think. Um, it certainly seems to be smaller than my other one. Here's my raw cart, which would not fit in this box. Um, but then this has the uh, built-in wrist rest, which I quite like, but yeah, obviously it's a choice. Now, you, you, <laughs> yeah, this probably bears some explaining. Also, my Rocket has some key ca keycaps that are scraped off. The, pr the thing is, I bought a German layout keyboard by accident when I bought this. I really couldn't be arsed to, re to return it. So I just, uh, I just scraped some of the keys with the intention of... Um, you know, putting stickers or or, or masking, you know, masking them and putting uh, uh, paint on and, and sealing them up or whatever. I've just never got around to it. Um, I love this keyboard. There's nothing wrong with this keyboard. I really love it. Uh, and also, I have Roca mouse. Uh, as you can see, the Roca Cone XTD. Now, unfortunately, Roca, I've actually changed the line of mice quite extensively since I bought my original cone. No, this is the XTD. This is my replacement. This is the second one of it. Now this one is very close to the original and it's and, and I still love it. They've actually improved it slightly because the, the, the mouse the wheel was the uh, the big problem in the other one. It did break quite early on for me. Uh, well not break but it, it, and eventually the, the mouse just wore out just um so the the, the thing is I've been looking for a new mouse and a new keyboard uh, sorry, but not necessarily a new keyboard. Uh, and uh, then, you know, I was reminded of the analog one and what have you. So anyway, i babbling on. So uh, similar layout to this one, except it's UK ISO. Hopefully, that's what I ordered. Get ourselves back in. Uh... Yeah. Right, so without further ado, he says, for the third or fourth time, Let's get a look at this beauty. Here we go. Now it's very nicely packaged, nice black package. Oh, they've got a little, uh, you know, lovey thing there. A uh, nice plastic cover. Um, uh, obviously, it's USB as well, which is worth mentioning. Uh, what else? Right. Ah, no, it's. Right, I'm already. I've already had one of my fears allayed in that I was worried it was going to be a bit too light uh, and, and a bit, you know, make a bit of noise, but it feels a lot sturdier than I expected from what I've been reading. So uh, that's good. There we go. Uh, so this is the keyboard itself. Now I'll put that aside just now and just, just go through the rest of the, the contents first. Uh, let's see what we've got. We have got a uh, little bag. In the little bag, let's have a look. In the bag is a uh, do a quick start guide, which uh, is yep, looks relatively straightforward. Should be able to follow that, okay? Uh, greetings from Wooting. <laughs> it's a postcard. <laughs> uh, on the back, I don't know if you can read any of that. Let's see if it uh, makes any sense to you. Yeah. Ah, stay in focus. There we go. I'll read it out, though. Uh, without your support and contribution, we wouldn't be here. That's why we owe you one. If you ever need a favour, write it down and send a postcard to us. We'll do our best to make it happen. <laughs> P.S. Don't forget to show your contact information. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a postcard uh, from the Netherlands, of course, so you've got to have a Got to have a, a windmill. 
which is not focusing. Never mind. So that's that's quite an interesting little thing. I wonder I wonder how many people have sent their information in through the postcard and obviously it's a registration type thing, but you know, I wonder if they've um dealt with any nice favours. Now, uh in here these are spare key ca- uh, spare keys, sorry. Uh the keys themselves are actually modular, completely modular. I don't just mean the key cap, I mean the key. So you'll see the solderless modular cap. Cut your keys. I keep saying caps because I'm used to saying caps. I cannot get that one out. Let's try and get one out. There we go. There we go. So you'll see... Uh, oh, wow. They are optical. So you'll see the bottom of it. Um, let's see if I can get this to... The problem is, where I am there, I can't see this. There we go, right. Yes. Uh, that's a bit bit. Try my best. So they're optical rather than um, electrical. So there's no actual connection, uh, which is, you know, weird but awesome. Uh, you can hear, hopefully, these are clicky. Uh, because I wanted the clicky ones. They're not as clicky. They're not as loud a click as the uh, as my actual Cherry MX ones. Oh wait a minute, this is Ah, no. This shouldn't be clicky, I wouldn't have thought. This is I thought this was the red one. Ah, right, no. The mm, hang on. Oh no, the keyboard's clicks, so that's fine, it's fine. Uh so these, despite having a little red background, are the blues. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, there's no marking on them that I can see. Tells you uh, any detail, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's information about that there. So that's your key. So you get four spare, presumably because WASD is your more commonly used keys, four spare of clickers and non-clickers so I mean presumably there's a lot of options there you could put the non-clicker ones in your WASD uh, you know if you're a streamer or somebody who has a headset on and just likes to keep not not have as much noise obviously you'll hear the click of other keys um, if you've got the clicky keyboard but you won't hear those ones so much you know so that is one thing I get a lot when I'm on uh, when I was streaming before I've not done for a while but anyway that's another thing um, but also, um, when I was playing games with other people and I had the heads, uh, had the uh, the headphone and the mic on, then they would hear my keyboard quite quite loudly sometimes. Uh, I try to get my mic set up as best I can, but it's quite it's quite a good idea to know you can just replace them with the uh, the silent keys. Anyway, so you get four of each type: four clicky ones, four non-clicky ones. There's something in here which I don't know what it is. Ah, it's a little bag, a tiny little bag with screws in it. Which uh, is obviously for something for spares. So a tiny little bag of screws. We have the USB cable, which you need. Uh, it's, ooh, it's quite a heavy braided USB cable with the uh, what is becoming a bit of a standard end these days. Is that sort of thing? I think that's the same as my telephone. Come on, you can do it. Come on. Yeah, uh, oh, nearly. Anyway, I think that's the same as my telephone. Let's go and have a look. Get my telephone cable. Uh, yep, yep, that's the same. So that's, that's quite a standard thing these days. I think the uh, tour get past all the packaging. Yeah, the the uh, Steam Control is the same. Most phones these days are starting to be the same. So, yeah, uh, looks quite a long cable. Let's have a look. Length. Do our misses. Yeah, it's a reasonably long cable. Looks like it's... Uh, meter and a... I think it's no, not quite two metres, I wouldn't say, because I think that would be further and I could stretch my arms. Um... So it looks like enough cable for me anyway. Um, and as, you know, as it's a detachable cable, you could probably just buy a longer one. In fact, I've got like three metre ones of these somewhere, so uh, that shouldn't be a problem ever. The only thing that bothers me about this being a detachable... Uh, obviously, I'm not going into technical too much, as I said just now, but 
The only thing that bothers me about it being a detachable cable completely is that if you move it around, is, is it going to stay firmly in the back of the keyboard? So hopefully it will. Uh, the other thing here, which looks a bit odd, is the tool for uh, removing keycaps and presumably keys as well, given that it's got two in. I'm not sure. I did, uh, yeah, yeah, they're a different width to start. Yeah, okay. So presumably uh, there will be instructions and to use, although I'm pretty sure we can work. So that's that. Now, I notice there are two big sections in the, the box with just a bit of foam in them. I'm guessing that this is for the premium version so they don't have to re... Um, yeah, nothing else under there. So they don't have to re remake the packaging. Uh, the premium version comes with a whole... comes with all this, but also comes with a whole set of 88 key uh, mechanisms as well. Um, I think it's so you can change it from clicky to non-clicky. I, I, I can't remember which way round it is, but, but um, yeah, that's the that's the other the other you know the deluxe version or whatever. Uh, I'm just going to double check. There's nothing under here. I don't think there is. No, it's just uh, just packaging. Oopsie. Let's get that in there. Boom. And uh, yeah, so that's what's in the box. Um, Ooh, I'm very excited, obviously, to go on and try it. So, but I do like to ramble in my videos, so I'll keep rambling. Right, I've got that out of the way. Let's have a look at the actual keyboard itself. So we have got uh, the keyboard. As I said, let's compare it with my existing keyboard. Uh, the keyboard layout is yeah, it's it's almost identical size-wise to the actual keyboard itself. Uh, the frame is smaller. This one's got a frame and a, a wrist rest and more bu and buttons down here for um, switching functions and and um, uh, profiles, switching profiles and things. Um, so there's that. Uh, da -da -da -da. But so this is a lot smaller. Um, I'm going to have to get used to that. I might have to purchase a wrist rest for myself. Uh, this oh. Yeah, so it's quite dark, isn't it? Don't worry, I'll have it lit up in a second. Uh, the sides are fairly plain. Just uh, a little sort of indentation type thing going on. Uh, front is nothing, obviously. There's nothing at the front, it's just there. The the company logo. Also, and something that... Ah, hmm, something I like, uh, is that the logo keys, instead of being a Windows logo or whatever, are actually their company logo. Um, as a Linux user, I don't like Windows keys, Mod 4 or, or whatever for me. Uh, also, I like on the uh, Rocat that there's no caps lock key, because it's the, the most stupid and pointless key in all of existence. Um, this has an actual caps lock key, annoyingly, but I will obviously be reassigning that as soon as possible <laughs> to something else. Um, on the, ooh, It's a bit wobbly because there's no... No, no frame around it. We'll get uh, leave that for the other for the uh, technical time. Um, yeah. So my rollcat key on the on the rollcat key with the caps where the caps lock key is. So left of the A on the rollcat is uh, what's called rollcat's easy switch, uh, which is on most of the modern stuff. It's also a, one of the buttons on a mouse can be assigned to it as well. Usually uh, one of them is on the side, and what that is is kind of a another modifier key. So that modifier key gives you a whole other layer of keys or mouse buttons or whatever. So, you you know, you're, you're almost doubling the amount of buttons. Uh, this does have function keys. Uh, all the other keys are pretty much standard. It's quite nice to see the UK symbols again, so I can remember where things are when I'm trying to look for things. Uh, so that's good. It's Nicely clicky. It's not. It's obviously not loud because it's not picking up uh, when I uh, when I push it without uh, speaking. So let's have a, a go at this. That's oh no, that's obviously right up at the mic. So uh, down there again. Let the die off. Yep, I would say that's no louder than the other one. They're very smooth keys as well. Now, in a review video that I saw, somebody was saying they're very smooth. Um, yeah, they are. 
Mm. Okay, uh, the back of the thing uh, has three different options for the cable channel. Uh, and a little clip for holding it in by the looks of this, that's good, you can hold your cable tight and you've got little feet to raise it up if you so desire uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, depends on type, if I'm typing or gaming or whatever I'll have a look at that uh, now, uh, this is an unboxing, not an actual techie video, but I will just because I can't resist I will fire it up and let you see the default um, or lights or whatever and uh do, do, do. have a quick type on it to see what it feels like let me see now right so this goes that way up mm, that's quite mm. you know what this reminds me of that's odd it's quite a tight fit and it's quite hard to get it in it reminds me of the atari st mouse uh, uh, yeah, mouse and joystick ports, which were really awkward. It's not as hard as that to get in, but it is slightly awkward. Obviously, it's not something you're going to use a lot, but if you're a gamer, uh, and this is intended as a gaming keyboard, you might be the kind of person that's taking this around with you and dismantling it and putting it back together. So, mm, maybe, maybe uh, that would be an issue for some people. Worth noting. Uh, I'm just going to plug it straight into the centre one. Get into a USB hub somewhere. Oh, excuse my sin. And oh, there we go. And it lights up. Uh, so there, as you can see, you've got a, a rainbow as your default um, color scheme. Focus. Too bad. Uh, and. Uh, there's a key on the keyboard for mode, which switches between the analog and the digital, I believe. So there you go, that's me in, I think, one of the analog modes. There's four profiles on board. Um, standard digital, which is that, I believe. And then that, and then I'm not sure you switch between your three profiles, but then, you know, you're in analog mode. Now, obviously, it doesn't physically feel any different. Because it's you know physically the same keyboard, but you you should in, in games and things see the difference. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that for now. I am going to now go away and have a play with it, obviously, and I will uh, from there uh, hopefully make another video fairly soon, giving you some uh, feedback on what it's like to actually use, how well it gets on with some games, because a lot of people have, have, have well, pardon me. Uh, Gamers want things that you just plug in and use. Now, given that I am I'm a gamer, but I'm not hardcore gamer by any stretch. I just I just like my games. Uh, but I do. Uh, hang on, I might as well back up to my ugly mug here. Yeah. Uh, yep. So uh, I do like uh, you know I like nice controllers and you know I like to be comfortable when I'm gaming, even though I'm not like a super hardcore. Esports mad or whatever person. Uh, but, you know, um, gamers, I think, expect things to be sort of as close as possible to use the old phrase plug and play. They want things to just work. Um, and I think this is, there's a couple of things to notice. It's, it's an early, this is the first model, it's an early model. Oh, yeah, I mentioned earlier that this is a 10 key list. They are looking at bringing out a, a full size one. Uh, although I think gamers these days, I'm not sure if they use those or not. Even MMO players tend to be sort of adding things to the mouse or using other... I'm not sure, man. I'm saying that. I don't know. Uh, so, the uh, the point I was making is that I, I, I still like to be comfortable with but I'm I'm also, as a, as a sort of tinkerer and techie person and a Linux user, um, I'm one of those Linux users, yeah, I know. Not just, I mean, there's a few, I've, I, I'm in a Linux gaming group, a Linux gaming community, and there's a lot of people in there that just literally just use Linux by preference, for and, um, and they're also gamers. Whereas I am a Linux user who games, if that makes sense, hopefully. Hopefully that's uh, made some sense. Um, 
so I I'm also looking for you know a, a, a keyboard that's comfortable for typing for for you know all sorts of other things as well. So I will be trying it out for all sorts. However, uh, I'm also willing to have a, a bit of a tinker around quite happily. I'm you know if it doesn't work with the game because this is another thing. Some people say no, oh, you know it works. It doesn't work out of the box with some games and and you know it's very hit and miss and what have you. I think two things. One is it's early in the, in in its life anyway, and also that they they are building a database of. Uh, profiles and things that you can download quite cleverly the way they've done it instead of having to download a file uh, it looks like um, it just generates a, like a checksum type thing it's like a big code that I've seen that you just you copy and paste it into your uh, software for the for the for the thing and it creates the new profile and loads it up which is quite quite interesting um, as far as I can tell it doesn't download anything or you know it's, it's literally just the key the code which you know obviously reconstitutes into the, the set uh, in, in one big honking string. Now, what was the other thing I was going to say? Uh, oh, yes, uh, I was going to, going to say as well that the uh, keyboard doesn't need software as a, like a driver or anything, so it's only for setting it up. Uh, once it's set up, you, you've stored four profiles, you have digital and three three analog profiles. You can just, if that's all you ever use it for, just those three settings, you'll never have to touch the software again. Um, the software is available on Mac, Linux, and Windows, so you know there's no there's no second class citizens as far as I can tell, except for a few technical details. There is one thing um, in analog mode. It comes up. A, it's supposed to come up as a USB device, a gaming device. Uh, now I get this the wrong way around probably, but I think on Linux and Mac it only does direct input, not X input, whereas on Windows it does both. Now that might even be old news of the time I'm saying. Uh, for the most part, again, this is for the next video. It won't matter to me very much as long as it works at all. I use a, a, a combination of, of um, usually my mouse, keyboard, controllers, what have you. Uh, and, a, and a program called SC Controller, which was originally a Steam Controller, um, a standalone Steam Controller configuration and uh, profile making tool. Um, it's very, very good bit of software. Highly recommended. I, I even Patreon Kozak, the guy who makes it. Um, it's an awesome bit of software. It has, however, it has grown way beyond just for the Steam Controller, and you can plug any USB controller into it these days. And I've had no problem with uh, with any of them, uh, and I can assign things to them. Obviously, you can't configure, you know, an, a digital joystick as you know the Steam controllers pattern. You know, it's not a miracle worker, but uh, anything it reads in, um, it understands whether it's digital, analog. Uh, I think it might actually be able to do dead zones and things as well. I'm not entirely sure about that. Definitely with the Steam controller, you've got full control of everything that you can get with uh, with the Steam controller really good um but it works well with other controls so i'm very confident i was confident enough to buy it knowing that i can even if i can't get it to do what i want uh like in a game automatically that i can set it up an sc uh same with the mouse so at the moment uh, the other yeah i said combination and i didn't really see what the other thing was so at the moment i use sc controller which is always running for me along with uh Rocat's, uh software uh, the Linux software, which is unofficial, but very, very, you know, very, very good. Um, you know, I've I've never found anything I couldn't do with it. Uh, that, that you know, apparently you can that you can do in other other uh, systems with it. Um, now switching away from the Rocat keyboard is going to take a few combined things away from me for the mouse. So that's going to be an interesting thing I'll have to sort out because I do use the, the what's called the easy shift key that I mentioned earlier. I do quite often use that on the keyboard to do things on the mouse um, so that I can assign all the buttons on the mouse instead of just um, you know all of them except one which I'm keeping as easy shift. Uh, so yeah, there's, 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 there's issues, but I'll, I'll come back to that in my other video, in the next video, that's all about that. So for now, uh, this has been the unboxing, I hope... This ramble has been fun for you. And uh, yeah, this is the Wooting One analog keyboard. And it comes with very nice packaging as well. Uh, I'm going to stop now. Uh, remember where to find the button as well as I've done this. Thank you. Bye.